Hello. Today's demonstration will take a look at rolling motion and moment of inertia. Here we have a ramp set up for you, as well as various objects that have similar radii, similar masses, things like that. And we're going to see which ones would win in a race down this ramp. So first, we have two objects for which we can control their mass. They have identical masses. You can see the two weights in the center. Um, they have the exact same radius. I can fit them on top of each other, and you can see they're the same. But in spite of having the same mass, they have different moments of inertia. This object has the masses pushed to the outside, giving it a large moment of inertia. This object has the masses pushed towards the center, giving it a small moment of inertia. Let's line them up and see which one will make it to the bottom of the ramp first. Take a moment to think about which one you think will reach the bottom of the ramp first. What we saw with this was that the object with the mass close to the center was actually able to make it to the base of the ramp faster. Let's take a look at it one more time. Now, why is that? With the mass close to the outside, this is actually difficult to rotate. It actually requires more rotational kinetic energy to rotate this than it does this. So while these two objects have the same masses, right, the exact same masses, and they're going through the same change in potential energy, they are actually getting more rotational kinetic energy for the higher moment of inertia which means that this object is able to use more of its total mechanical energy for translational kinetic energy. Now, if you've done the math with the law of conservation of energy, you've actually seen that the mass cancels out of that equation if we really work it out. Now let's look at a hoop and a disk of the same radius. Now let's try it for smaller ones. What we are consistently seeing here is that the objects with the lower moments of inertia are actually making it to the bottom of the ramp first. Why is this? Well, by now we know that objects with low moments of inertia are in fact easier to rotate than objects with higher moments of inertia. What this means is that the objects with the high moments of inertia are using a lot of their mechanical energy simply to rotate, and thus they're not gaining translational kinetic energy as much as they're gaining rotational kinetic energy. Since all of the objects are beginning with the exact same potential energy, thus the exact same total mechanical energy, they only have so much energy to expend when they reach the bottom of the ramp. Some of that goes to translational kinetic energy. Some of it goes to rotational kinetic energy. High moments of inertia will be high, or high rotational kinetic energies and low translation. Now let's take a look at objects that have a similar constitution, but different radii. We have two disks here. Let's see how they rotate. Take a moment to think about which one you think will reach the end of the ramp first. They reach the end of the ramp at the same time. Now let's take a look at two hoops. they reach the bottom of the ramp at the same time. Now, why is that? If we take a look at the math, we can easily see that the mass and the radius of the objects end up canceling out of all of our mathematics work. But let's think about that physically. If we have two disks, they are equally easy to rotate, which means that proportionally, 
they'll be expending the same proportion of their total energy on translating as they are on rotating. So what if you had to choose an object to win a race to, that's going down a ramp? Because, you know, that's what you want to do with your time during a pandemic. Um, what object would you choose? By now, it should seem fairly obvious that you would choose a disc over a hoop. Clearly, the disc is going to win. But what if you had an object that had an unusual moment of inertia? How could you determine if it would win? So here, I have a bottle of liquid. And I'm going to take it and allow it to roll down the ramp. And first, observe its motion down the ramp. Now, of all the objects I have to have this compete with, probably going to pick a disc at the very least, right? So now let's take a look at that. Why is it that the bottle wins against the disc? It turns out that the liquid in this bottle is not rotating. If we look closely as the bottle rotates, the liquid does not. So the only thing with rotational inertia here is the outer shell of the bottle. The stuff inside actually remains reasonably stationary. So rolling along a ramp, you begin with a set amount of mechanical energy. When you get to the bottom of the ramp, you have that same amount of mechanical energy. That's the law of conservation of energy. But an object that is difficult to rotate, so it has a high moment of inertia, is going to have a high rotational kinetic energy at the bottom, which gives it less kinetic energy for translation. Thank you.